Hey guys, I just want to show you real quick before we get started talking about this awesome rifle that I do have a chamber flag in the chamber. The gun is empty, but I'm going to be closing the bolt in order for me to have it properly sit on the rnldisplays.com stand. So I just want to give you that heads up before we get started. Hey guys, what is going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Uh, if you've been following the channel recently, you know I've done a series of videos over this uh, brand new Daniel Defense M4A1 that I purchased recently. It was a bucket list purchase. It's something I've wanted for a very long time. It's a rifle with an excellent uh, military heritage. I believe it's been used uh, since 2005 by US SOCOM. And uh, even more importantly, I was able to turn this into my first uh, movie gun build, I guess you could say. Uh, what I was trying to do was to replicate a rifle that looked exactly like the rifle that Josh Brolin carries in the movie Sicario. Uh, Sicario is one of my favorite films, and this is the kind of movie build where anybody can do this, but there's a little bit of a commitment that you have to put into it, into finding the parts, and then also obviously the financial aspect of it. So first of all, the rifle itself is absolutely fantastic. Um, it's, it's The build on it's great. It's a 14 and a half inch uh, carbine, carbine link gas system. It does have a two inch uh, flash hider on the end there that's pinned and welded to help the barrel reach the 16 inch minimum. And I just wanted to talk about some of the parts that I bolted on it to recreate that Sicario gun look. Uh, first things first, I want to send a shout out to a couple channels. The first one is, I think it's Bunny IP Dude, and Bunny IP Dude had left a comment on my video saying that he had also done a build like this, and actually I used his picture and his information over on uh, the International Movie Firearms Database, I think it's IMFDB or something like that, and a uh, great place to go, by the way, if you're looking up information on movie guns, and he had mentioned some of the parts that he had uh, used to build a build, to create a build very similar to this one. Um, so I was able to use that information to look up some of the parts. And then also over on uh, Vickers Tactical, there's like an ISS Hollywood movie guns video where they show off um, guns that are used in movies. And the Vickers Tactical guys had gone over to their studio in California and showed off this rifle. And this gave me a good close-up, so I was able to locate the parts that I wanted to get. Uh, so I guess we can maybe start from the, uh, from the front and then work our way to the, to the top there, to the rear, to show you what we've done to it. So first things first, I've got the uh, Surefire... M720V, and this light came out, I believe, in 2009, 2010. It was adopted by US SOCOM for the SOP Mod program. Uh, it's only 150 lumens. It's not a very bright light, but it does it does come with a pressure switch, which is really nice. Um, it has a 240, I want to say, milliwatt infrared beam that it throws, and that is awesome for night vision use. And I did show this off when I did the flashlight test. I did show it off being used with just an inexpensive night vision camera that I have in my house or my camera when it goes into night vision mode. Uh, prices on this thing, I don't know what it was when it was brand new. I did pay $500 for it, which is insane. But to find one brand new these days is about impossible. I was looking around trying to find one and they recently were, you know, had been stopped being carried by a lot of the popular retailers like Optics Planet and Amazon and stuff like that. So if you find one, you're, pr you're gonna have to pay a pretty penny for it. Um, there were counterfeits out there, but I wanted to commit myself to getting the real thing. I didn't want to skimp on any parts. I dropped this much money on the rifle. What's well, a couple more grand, right? In parts to get it exactly how you want it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, how to tell if you have a fake. Um, you can tell if you have a fake because when you pull the little locking lever over into the IR mode and you hit the light switch, if it goes into strobe, you've got a fake light. If you have it in IR mode, there should be a faint red glow that comes out of the front of the lens. And I'll put links to all my videos and stuff uh, in the chat box down below or in the description box down below and you can watch the review of what I'm talking about. And that's how you know that you have the real thing because for a couple years there, over in Wish.com, you could pick up some fakes. Uh, the next item that I added was the Knight's Armament Grip. It is real. It's not a, not a counterfeit or anything like that. It's real deal. These are about $67 if you want one. If you want the look but you want to save some money but you do like that broom handle style grip, um, you can get yourself an MFT grip, which runs about twenty dollars, and it's going to be—it's going to look almost identical. It latches on the same way. It just screws up from the bottom. It's got a little plastic peg that locks it on your Picatinny rail, and it's all good to go. I believe that this part inside of it is replaceable in the center. So if you do wear out that little peg, you can get a new one, and you don't have to throw the part away, which is a really good thing. Uh, up on the top, we've got some actual Troy battle sights. Let's flip these up and give you a look at them real quick here. I'll show you the packages for those in a little bit. So the H&K style has an open top on the front, and that replicates the uh, type of sights that Josh Brolin also has on his rifle, and then also on the rear. I mean, there are fakes out there that you can buy, like on Wish.com and so on, but I wanted to get the real thing. So they are called Troy, let's see, front folding battle sight and rear folding battle sight. 
I don't know if we have an actual model number or not, but I can show you that information there, sure. Here we go. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and show you the rear sight. Oh, that's tiny. I don't think you guys are going to be able to see that. Camera has some macro issues here, especially when there's not the right kind of light. Okay, well, anyway, uh, you can get these. I ordered these off of Brownells. I paid $200 for the set, so obviously not cheap at all. All right, so up next we've got the EOTech 553. Um, this is a real 553. This is not a counterfeit. Uh, one of the ways you can tell if you have a counterfeit is if you hit the IR button and your reticle goes from red to green, you know you've got a fake on this one. When you hit the IR button, the reticle goes out, which it, it goes into an infrared wavelength, which you can only pick up if you're wearing night vision goggles. So that's how you know that you got the real thing. This one was guaranteed to be legit, guaranteed to be real. And uh, like I said, I purchased it from a, it was a gun store actually that was located in Colorado. I did pay $500 for it, which seems crazy, but these, there are people selling these for $800 used on GunBroker also. Um, but luckily I picked one up. It was just, I checked in the middle of the night. I saw one for sale. One of the distinct differences and really the only difference between this and Josh Brolin's rifle in the movie is his does say EOTech on it. Mine is SU-231PEQ. So this may be a military surplus part. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if the models that anybody bought, the civilian models, had that, or I don't know if somebody had scuffed off the logo. But like I said, it is the real thing. It is legit, and it does have the little arms mounting system on the other side. And uh, and again, I'm, it, it does work great. I mean, I do have a very accurate shot with it. We'll talk about accuracy of the rifle in just a little bit. And the last thing I added, the least expensive thing, were just some little pads that I put in here. I purchased these off, purchased these off of Amazon. These are just uh, flat, dark earth, Picatinny rail cushions or padding, I guess you could say, or... They fill the gap in there so you don't tear your hands up when you're shooting the rifle or handling it. And again, that handguard is just absolutely awesome on this thing. Uh, again, it does feel a little more compact. It's a little bit easier to swing because you do have a slightly shorter barrel uh, overall. Like you don't have the you know the extra couple inches on the end like you do on a 16-inch rifle. Now, again, as I'm talking about these parts here, I'm not trying to brag. This is something that I've been putting money back for for a while uh, to pay for. And I'm still going to be making a few more payments on it to get it taken care of. But... Um, you know, if you want to replicate something from the movie, there are many times that, you know, it's, it's going to take a serious commitment on your part. And sometimes, you know, you render the gun unoperable if you modify it enough to make it look like the movie gun. So it's kind of something that you buy into as soon as you go that route. But again, it's one of these bucket list guns I've wanted for a long time. Um, I'm not getting any younger. I've been really watching my expenses the last couple of years with the guns that I purchased. And it was just about one of those times I wanted to get myself something really nice. You know, you do that sometimes. Uh, shooting the rifle, accuracy right now, just initial testing. We just dialed it in at 25 yards. And uh, I was getting, I think, just like a like about a one-inch group. I had a couple shots that overlapped. I mean, maybe a 0.75 inch of a group at uh, 25 yards, which is nothing. I really want to take it out to 50 and 100 yards and see what it can do. But I also wanted to invest in some 62 grain ammo, maybe some 77 grain ammo, something a little bit heavier, as this does have a 1 in 7 twist and it favors a slightly heavier round. But the shooting experience is just fantastic. The trigger is just a little bit heavy. It does have a little bit of creep before it uh, before it goes, before it gives. And it uh, does feel a lot just like a regular mil-spec trigger. I mean, I don't notice a whole lot of difference. It doesn't have a Geisley trigger in it or anything like that. But overall, I do not regret buying it. And it is an absolute joy to shoot at the range. Again, just wanted to show you uh, the other side of the rifle. Um, one other thing that was different too, this does come with an ambidextrous, what's called grip and rip charging handle. I did take that off and I put just a standard mil spec on it because it matches what was in the movie. And uh, here's what the little pressure switch system looks like. Josh Brolin's pressure switch was a little bit different from this one. I don't know what kind of a pressure switch they put on it, but I'm not gonna change it out. I mean, it looks nearly identical to the one that's in the movie. And so that's not really such a big deal to me. And this is the uh, Surefire original part, so I wanted to go with it. The little arm system that you have up here on the 553 is great because it makes it easy to remove the optic. This optic, again, this is an early gen, early EOTech style sight, so it's not going to have the sharp defined reticle that you're going to get on the newer models like the EOTech, I believe, what, 513 maybe? This one's a little bit hazier, so to speak, but it's still perfect. It's still easy to use. It has that 68-inch MOA ring, which a lot of people are used to, and uh, it's just been a fantastic rifle. So if you've been on the fence about picking one of these up, just get one. Now, let's talk about the price of the rifle. What did I pay for? Where did I get it? And so on. This video is not being monetized right now. And besides, if it was, I'd get hit anyway because of all the parts I'm talking about and mentioning infrared and stuff like that. So um, I did buy this from FamilyFirearms.com. And what's cool about that company is they um, have very, very low prices. They have fast shipping. It showed up within about seven days after ordering it. Uh, to my FFL, I think I ordered it on a Saturday. It showed up like the following Wednesday. I picked it up the following Thursday. 
Um, and it was just a really quick experience. Uh, the MSRP on this is $2,046, okay? Uh, FamilyFirearms.com charged $16.99 for it. And then I believe it was an extra $25, bucks, which included insured shipping. So insurance and shipping was $25. They don't charge sales tax. They do not charge sales tax outside of their own state uh, on internet gun sales, which was awesome. They're saving quite a bit of money, so consider going that route. I've ordered a scope from them too also, and they do ship on Sundays. So if you order something on a Saturday, you might get a legit shipping notice on a Sunday because I believe they're closed on Sunday so they can ship. So you get the gun quickly. Um, again, you do have to go through your FFL, and I went through, um, unless you are an FFL, I went through um, SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska, and Stan did the transfer for me, and uh, I picked it up over there, and it is awesome. So anyway, I'll be bringing you more range tests of this particular carbine. Go pick one up if you don't have one. Again, I, I shoot different brands. I've got you know Bear Creek. I've got Palmetto State Armory. Uh, we fired all kinds of different brands on the channel. This one by far is one of my favorites. The furniture takes a little getting used to, you know, the, the grip is going to feel a little bit different, especially if you are, you know, kind of born and bred in the whole Magpul family like I was. Uh, you switch brands, things feel a little bit different because you've been shooting the same stock and grip for years, right? But uh, this one's awesome. So I think that's about it. I think I've pretty much exhausted everything I came to talk to you about today. Hey guys, please like and subscribe. Uh, make sure that you follow me over on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're also over on uh, GunStreamer and GunTube.org. God, we're pretty much all over the place. We do a little podcast on Saturday mornings called Caliber Corner, and uh, that is 8 a.m. Central Time. Most of the time, we talk guns and ammo and pretty much whatever's on our mind. But otherwise, guys, I think that's about it. So I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.